What is up, YouTube? My name is Alex Lugo, and today I am going to reverse engineer an Android game. A little while ago, I found myself downloading and playing this really cool Android game called Seed Chip. In the game, you play as the spaceship AI that houses the last bit of humanity. So your goal is to fly around the galaxy looking for a suitable new planet to seed human life on. The game itself is built by one of my friends named John Aliff, who's this pretty cool science fiction writer slash game developer. I reached out to him and I asked him if I can download the APK to his Android game and then reverse engineer it to show all of you on YouTube how you would do something like that. I'm not gonna do anything too crazy with the game. I'm gonna keep the core systems in it, but today I'm just going to change up some of the text that you might see in these situations in the game. So without further ado, Let's get into reverse engineering. The main tool I will be using today to reverse engineer this Android game is called APK Tool. APK Tool is this really awesome program I found online a few years ago that apparently is supposed to turn an Android APK back into bytecode or Java or whatever it is. So you can take any sort of Android app, turn it back into its base code, and then edit it from there. I had been wanting to play with this for years, but I haven't gotten the chance until just now. So we're finally gonna get to see just what APK tool can do. I'm gonna go ahead and use the APK tool D function for decode, and I'm gonna pass in the C chip APK file path. And uh, we'll just let it work here. And it's gonna spit out a whole directory of the entire reverse engineered APK. And yes, it was that easy, but now comes the fun part. So we get to poke around in all the code, and hopefully change some stuff in it. So I'm kind of attracted to the Smalley stuff here. I had done some research. Apparently all this is like Android JVM bytecode. So one of these days I might just make a simple game in Android bytecode. I'm gonna look around a bit more. And actually I had noticed I came upon Apache Cordova inside this thing. So I guess John used the Cordova engine to build this app, which is good because now it's giving us all this JavaScript when we look inside the right directory in Atom. Uh, this is actually a lot better to mess with than bytecode because it's, you know, a full language. And it looks like a sugar cube. I'm not sure what that is, so I'm gonna go ahead and look that up. Okay, it looks like sugar cube is something about twine. And this is definitely the same one because it says free gratis just like the other one. The only question is, what's twine? Okay, so it looks like twine is like some open source tool for branching stories inside JavaScript which explains why he would use it for this game. Now that we got a better idea of the environment we're working in, I want to be able to read John's JS code. It's kind of all bunched up together in the app files right now, so I'm gonna have to write an extraction script for it. Now, the idea here is that I can remove all the JavaScript and CSS from the app to make it more readable for when I go to change the code. I'm gonna create a Python script for extracting all his code, and I'm gonna switch over to time-lapse as I actually write it. Finally, we've extracted the JavaScript and CSS. The next step is to run it through a beautifier so that way I can actually read it and it's not just like one giant line of CSS garbage. I've extracted and beautified all of the JavaScript and CSS, but there's still this ugly part here. I've read some of it and it appears to be game text, so this must actually be the sugar cube code that feeds into the game. If we change this, then that means we can change what's actually displayed by the game. And that's our main goal here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into another file for better organization. I've run it through the beautifier and unfortunately it doesn't affect the readability much. So I'll have to fix that later if I want to change the code and put it on my phone. But let's put a pin in that for right now because I want to see if the unedited version even works on my phone. 
I'm going to copy some code from a secret project of mine that can deploy an APK file to my phone. Let's go ahead and build the base APK and give the script permissions to run and test it. Yeah, it knows when I don't have a device connected. That's good. Let's try and deploy it for real now. Um, so it's not on my phone, and I've got this weird error. I think it's time I pay a visit to the holy land of all programmers. Okay, so I've done some research and turns out I have to generate a signed APK and to do that I have to create some sort of key file. I'm just gonna fill in some bullshit and then time lapse it. I stole this signed APK generator script right here from online and I am now modifying it to work with my own project. I'm gonna generate the signed APK for my key and then try and deploy it again. Uh, scratch that. Let me just fix this one thing and try again. And there we go. We got it. The original seed ship APK works on my phone. So at least we verified that. I'm going to write some code that makes our sugar cube stuff a little more readable. So that way I can edit it easily. So I'm going to finish up that script in time lapse here. <laughs> actually turned out pretty good looking. We can finally kind of make out what's going on in this code. So I'm going to make a bunch of random, noticeable changes to the code and deploy it to my phone. changes are done and I'm ready to deploy. I just got to edit my deploy script so it'll automatically build the APK. I also have to copy and paste all my sugarcube stuff back into the main HTML file. So I'll just do that and uh, oh, well that doesn't look too good. I mean it's, uh, you know, it's probably nothing. So let's go ahead and deploy the app and it looks like we got a few errors. Um, Oh, uh, <laughs> all right, well, at least it still has my changed text in the beginning. That's definitely a step in the right direction. Well, I feel kind of stupid because apparently all I had to do to fix that was just start it over again with a clean build. So there you have it. That is how you can reverse engineer a Android Cordova game, change around some of the code, and then have a new APK on your phone. Wow. Okay, that was a lot, and it was a lot of fun. So hopefully all of you found this video entertaining or helpful or just whatever. If you did, please, please like, share, subscribe, comment. I think that's it, but I'm not sure. Thank you all so much for watching till the end of this video. Definitely let me know if you want to see more of this type of format of video. You know, videos where I'll like, I'll code a little bit and I'll talk and I'll code a little bit and I'll like run through how to do something super cool in CS. Thank you so much to John Aliff for letting me use his game. He's a really cool guy and you should definitely check him out. I'll have links to all his stuff in the description. You can also check out other videos on my channel all around the screen here. Apart from that, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.